gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people. You know, I find myself once again in the same position as President Obama. We both oppose reparations, and we both are the descendants of slavery. Why not target the African American community? Why not say then, this is for you? This is for African Americans. If, if there was a banking crisis, then you'd target money for the banks. If there was a national disaster, you'd target, uh, you'd target your money for the national, for, uh, no, 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 for no, disaster that, that's, relief. That, 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 that's, not how, uh, that's not how America works. America works when all of us are pulling together and everybody is focused on making sure that every single person has opportunity. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, I'm gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people. No, because whatever benefits that black family will benefit that community and society as a whole and the country, right? Vice President Biden, do you support reparations? Well, I mean, since I haven't spoken on this, got a chance. Um, number one, the reason we're the country we are is because of immigration. We've been able to cherry pick the best from every single continent. The people who come here have determination, resilience. They are ready to stand up and work like the devil. We have 24 out of our 100 children in our school today is Hispanic. The idea that we are going to walk away and not provide every opportunity for them is not only stupid and immoral, but it's bad for America. They are the future of America, and we should invest in them. Everybody will benefit from it, every single American. And you should get used to it. This is a nation of immigrants. That's who we are. That's why we're who we are. That's what makes us different, and we should invest in it. For, uh, no, 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 disaster that, that's, relief. That, 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 that's not how, uh, that's not how America works. Crime bill. The oh, Biden crime bill. The Biden crime bill is before us. Calls for the death penalty for 40, 51 offenses. A wag in the newspaper recently wrote that something to the effect that Biden has made it a death penalty offense for everything but jaywalking. Biden crime bill. Biden crime bill. The Biden hatch crime bill. As it becomes law, God willing, I hope that we will have ended once and for all this notion that is a hangover from the 60s, that somehow Democrats are weak on crime and Democratic presidents are weak on crime and Republicans are tough on crime. The truth is every major crime bill since 19... 1976 that's come out of this Congress. Every minor crime bill has had the name of the Democratic Senator from the state of Delaware, Joe Biden, on that bill. I like the idea they keep in jail longer. I'm the guy that wrote the bill requiring federal judges to keep people in jail 100% of the time for which they're sentenced, and in notable exceptions, only 85%. So I'm all for tougher enforcement. We wrote the statute saying, burning the flag in and of itself is a crime, period. Boom. We changed the law so that if you are arrested and you are a drug dealer, under our forfeiture statutes, you can, the government can, take everything you own. Everything from your car to your house, your bank account, not merely what they confiscate in terms of the dollars from the transaction that you've just got caught engaging in. They can take everything. We have laws in the last several years where we don't allow judges' discretion to sentence people. Flat time sentencing. You get caught, you go to jail. We've gone from there all the way up to saying, 
under the leadership of Senator Thurman, and I'd like to suggest that I take some small credit for it myself as well, and others, the presiding officer, that there is now a death penalty. And we passed it a couple years ago. If you are a major drug dealer involved in the trafficking of drugs and murder results in your activities, you go to death. and a number of other severe penalties. Back when Bill Clinton's crime bill passed, Joe Biden was such an outspoken supporter, he said, quote, I'd like to be running and have someone use the crime bill against me. We must take back the streets. It doesn't matter whether or not the person that is accosting your son or daughter or my son or daughter, my wife, your husband, my mother, your parents, it doesn't matter whether or not they were deprived as a youth. It doesn't matter or not whether or not they had no background that enabled them to have to uh, become a, a social, uh, become socialized into the fabric of society. It doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society. The end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe, shoot my sister, beat up my wife, take on my sons. So I don't want to ask. What made them do this? They must be taken off the street. That's number one. There's a consensus on that. Unless we do something about that cadre of young people, tens of thousands of them, born out of wedlock, without parents, without supervision, without any structure, without any conscience developing, because they literally, I yield myself three more minutes, because they literally have not been socialized. They literally have not had an opportunity. We should focus on them now. If we don't, they will, or a portion of them will, become the predators 15 years from now. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets. They are beyond the pale, many of those people. Beyond the pale. And it's a sad commentary on society. We have no choice but to take them out of society. Bobby Rush, member of Congress, said the other day, I'm ashamed that I voted for the 94 crime bill. You ashamed of that bill? Not at all. Um, in fact, I drafted the bill. Uh, best rapper alive. Tupac. He's not a, you said he lives on. But not a lot. Lives. I know. I keep doing that. <laughs> you said, listen, West Coast tickled. girls think Tupac lives on. I'm with you. I'm with you. So Tupac. Oh, I'm trying to say I keep doing that. Supported the Green New Deal. You supported Medicare for All. You've supported legalizing marijuana. Joe Biden doesn't support those things. So are you going to bring the policies, those progressive policies that you supported as senator, into a Biden administration? What I will do, and I promise you this, and this is what Joe wants me to do, this was part of our deal. I will always share with him my lived experience as it relates to any issue that we confront. And I promised Joe that I will give him that perspective and always be honest with him. And is that a socialist or progressive perspective? No. <laughs> no, it is the perspective of, of a woman who grew up a, a, a black child in America, who was also a prosecutor, who also has a mother who arrived here at the age of 19 from India, who also, you know, likes hip hop. <laughs> like, what do you want to know? <laughs> well, I want to give you I want to give you the opportunity to address this. these students. We should challenge students in these schools to have advanced placement programs in these schools. We have this notion that somehow if you're poor, you cannot do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Wealthy kids. Black kids.
Do you think Bill Clinton was our first black president? Oh. Well, <laughs> uh, I, I think uh, Bill Clinton did have an enormous affinity with the African American community, uh, and still does. And I think that's well on. Uh, you know, like John, uh, one of the things that I'm always in, inspired by. No, I'm, uh, th th this I'm serious about. The, uh, I I'm, I'm always inspired by uh, young men and women who grew up in the South. Uh, when segregation was still taking place, when uh, you yeah, the transformations uh, that are still incomplete, but at least have begun, had not yet begun. Uh, and to see that transformation uh, in their own lives, I think that is powerful. Uh, and it is hopeful, uh, because what it indicates is that people can change. Uh, and each successive generation can uh, you know, create a, a different vision of how, you know, we have to treat each other. And I think Bill Clinton embodies that. I think he uh, deserves credit for that. Now, I haven't, you know, I, I have to say that, uh, uh, it, it, you know, I, I, I would have to, you know, investigate more, you know, uh, Bill's dancing abilities and, you know, uh, uh, some of this other stuff before I accurately judge uh, whether he was, in fact, a brother. But... Let's, 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 Senator Clinton, well, uh, weigh, I'm weigh sure in on that. I'm sure that can be arranged. <laughs> we got more questions. You got more okay. questions, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. It don't have nothing to do with Trump. It has to do with the fact I want something for my community. I would love to see- Take a look at my record, man. I extended the voting racks 25 years. I have a record that is second to none. The NAACP has endorsed me every time I've run. This is the first Indian American U.S. senator. And certainly to become the first uh, Indian senator in U.S. history, which would be quite an accomplishment. Not good. <laughs> Mama Harris is the first Indian American woman to run for vice president's post. Mama Harris has corporate history as she won the U.S. Senate seat from the state, becoming the first Indian American to achieve this feat. Kamala Harris, California's Attorney General, has also made history, becoming the first Indian American woman to be elected to the U.S. Senate. Do you support reparations? 